What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 93 Welcome guys New guitar, it's pink, it's green, it's pink It... it's not green Thank you No, but A2.6 TB... B... TB... B... TB Plus With the new uh, Duncan Solar Plus pickups Which are a little bit more towards the metal character than the regular uh, Duncan Solar Which was also very metal But this is a little bit harder, a little bit more traditional Just saying And uh... <sighs> Ha! Huh? Ha! Huh? Huh? <laughs> Hope you have your coffees ready, everyone. I'm actually a little bit hungover today because I had like two beers yesterday. What the hell? I, I went to watch Deftones at the same venue as I watched Corn a couple weeks back and uh, I just met some friends, had a, two beers and I got hung over. Fuck, man, it sucks being old. That's why I don't drink anymore, man. I can't, I can't, I can't fucking handle it. Just saying. I went to see Deftones, uh, they sounded horrible, unfortunately But, you know, it's still Deftones, I love the guys, you know We're gonna jump straight into the news, thank you so much So, in last week's news, we checked out when uh, Axl Rose was sounding like Herbert from Family Guy Well, it seems now that Guns N' Roses has cancelled a couple of shows because of... Uh, due to illness and medical advice some of the Guns N' Roses fans who attended the band's two concerts at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London last week complained about doors opening two hours late and very various sound problems during the Guns N' Roses performance, making it difficult to, for the people in the back of the venue to hear frontman Axel Rose's vocals. At the second concert on July 2nd, Rose told the crowd he was having issues with his voice, forcing Guns N' Roses to play a truncated 19 song set. As it seems, you know, Axel Rose is ill. And, uh, dude, that just sucks, man. It sucks completely. As we said last week, I mean, everyone can have a bad day. But vocalists are obviously more targeted because, you know, that's, that's their voice right there. If they get a cold, they're fucked. It's really sad to see, but also a really good reminder for me uh, to just not jump onto conclusions with watching clips of someone, you know, live. Anyone can have a bad day. And I got a lot of comments from people saying that Axel was sounding uh, great in other shows, or even at the same venue, just at another spot, because that can also be a thing. You know, sometimes when you go to a venue, sound sucks. Just like yesterday when I went to Deftones, the sound sucked, unfortunately. So there you go. Thank you. All right, watch Megadeth Dave Mustaine lashes out at Judas Priest's crew during Barcelona Rock Fest. Okay, Megadeth frontman Dave Mustaine reportedly became irritated when Judas Priest's road crew began sound checking while his band was performing at Spain's Barcelona Rock Fest this past Saturday, July the second. Okay, I understand what's happened here. Usually, when they have two stages next to each other on a festival and they kind of go back to back with bands while one band is playing the other band sets up and i guess what happened is that the Judas pre crew started sound checking or line checking on the other side and uh let's check it out because there's videos obviously let's go oh the guy's shredding <laughs> what's happening with the audience? Kiko, what's up? Oh shit, he's pointing a finger. I will be pissed off too. Seriously, like, if I can hear something happening on the side, like a really loud guitar while trying to play my fucking music, I will be pissed too. So, you know, this is legit. I understand Dave's frustration right here. Fucking pathetic amateur piece of shit you are. Ooh, oh, juicy on the news, baby. <laughs> Mega Def. Okay, okay. Mega Def. Mega Def. Mega Def. I want the Mega Def. Yes, there it is. I want the Mega Def too. Holy shit. Uh, you know, I understand, Dave. Obviously, I would, I would be pissed too. Next piece of news. Mastodon's brand Daler thinks music awards are a popularity contest. But hey, I'll take a Grammy. That's cool. <laughs> when I read this headline, it's perfect, man. He's saying, you know, it's like when you win an award, you're like, yeah. 
But what you don't win, you're like, uh, I don't care. I don't do this for awards. <laughs> and this is so fucking accurate. And you never do it for awards. I think it's kind of weird. I guess I appreciate it to one extent because you want a validation for all the hard work you put into your art. But on the other hand, I think it may be forced. Like suddenly someone somewhere decides to start giving out awards and suddenly you want one. Does it create common bonds? Is it a part of tribalism? So I don't know that you can put awards on what art is meant to do. But hey, I'll take a Grammy. That's cool. <laughs> I think Brian is putting the nail on the head. The head on the nail. He hits the nail on the head. He hits the nail on the head, yes, with this comment right here. It's funny, man, because it's obviously a popularity contest, if anything. You know, that, that's all there is. I mean, the, the Grammys, all the awards are like this. But you know what? He's absolutely right. If I would be nominated and win something, fuck yeah, I would be happy. I'm proud, just saying. And just like he said, if you don't win, you're like, I don't care. It's just people saving face, basically. Just, you know, you have to be true, man. Awards, man, they, they're just for popularity. And it's not for real skill of the art or whatever. It's just basically trying to save face in both situations when you win and when you don't win. <laughs> He's just saying it out loud. I like that. All right, Fender launches the Amper Stand, a pocket-sized guitar stand and pick holder. Okay, what is this? The super practical mini stand can be placed on just about any surface, including guitar amp Tolex. Okay, what is this? We get it. A guitar stand is hardly the glamorous item you can add to your gear collection, but a new product launched by Fender might just be the game changer in terms of convenience, at least. Look at this. What? Hasn't this been done before? Is this the first time we see something like this? Where you put it on the amp and you put your guitar... Uh, it's basically holding a guitar. I, like, I, I would put it here and put my guitar like this and it would hold the guitar. And then you have guitar picks in it. it. Hasn't that been done before? Shit. I think that surprises me the most. That it hasn't been done before. I mean, it's obvious. Why haven't anyone done this before? Anyways, kudos to f***ing Fender for doing this. Hello, Fluff. Every time I go to Guitar World, I see Fluff everywhere, man. How, how does that happen? So yeah, I think that's cool. Or is it? Is it cool? Is it? I don't know. Do people even have apps anymore? <laughs> Shit. Watch, here's Kevin Bacon dancing in an emulation t-shirt. I'm so sorry, guys. The news these past weeks have been absolutely awful. But I think it's pretty cool that uh, Kevin Bacon's wearing an emulation t-shirt. Why is he doing this? Is he, is, is he a fan? As the PRP points out, Kevin probably stole this shirt from his son, Travis Bacon, who's a member of both Black Mel's Black Anvil and the industrial metal crew Contracult Collective. Okay, 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 all right. But let's just watch Kevin Bacon dancing with an emulation t-shirt on. Oh shit, that seems dangerous. That was it. The news. Sammy Hager says that he makes more money from outside business ventures than he has from playing music. No shit. It is true. It's absolutely true. It's what's made it so great for me. I'm telling you guys, I swear by this. If you get lucky enough to get successful outside music, it makes it so much better in your elder years. Like now, I'm in my 70s and still going on and playing music. And you know why? Because I don't have to do it for a living. I don't have to make it my business. So I can pay my band more than they can make. They're happy and so they're happy to play with me. We all walk out on stage and we're happy to do it because we don't have to <coughs> do it. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. It's not as easy as back in the day to earn money on the actual music being sold but you just have to do all the other things around it to make the money. You know, that's that's how it is today. That, that's just a model right there. And, you know, people have to kind of adapt to this. Uh, anyways, that was the news, everyone. Thank you. So the latest Sun with Ola 92, people were asking, why did you blur out pics in the beginning of the video? Why was she censored? Do you hate your dog? That was not pics, that was a box with my address on it. I censored the box so you guys wouldn't see my address. But suddenly I hate my dog, pics, because of you guys. Just say, <laughs> just because I have to prove to you guys how much I love my dog, I put it in her, uh, her in my lap. Adventures with Ola, I decided to make an Adventures with Ola with pics because a lot of you guys, you like my dog. I like my dog too. So here's an Adventures with Ola with uh, pics and me and uh, my son. So let's uh, pull it down from here, okay? <laughs> Who's up there? You won't escape that way! 
Adventures with Ola. It's absolutely middle of the vacation right here. And Louise bought a bike with a card on it. So I figured I would uh, try it out. So yeah, I'm gonna try and see if I can load in the dog pics in here and we'll go for a ride uh, to pick up my son that's been uh, on a course in Maya. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. Uh, hopefully she doesn't try and jump out of the cart while driving. How was that? Is it okay? No. There's a lot to watch, but also maybe a little scary. Just saying. All right, so we're just about to stop on this field, throw some ball. And funny thing over there, I don't know if you can see it, but that's Lola Pelosa happening at the exact same time. So that's why all the people are walking there. But I figured we would just go into the field here somewhere, and just throw some ball with picks. That's her favorite pastime thing. Take a little break from it the bike. So this Lollapalooza has been uh, happening for a couple of days, but I think today uh, both Pearl Jam and Jerry Cantrell uh, are playing. I tried to get a hold of Jerry Cantrell, we could do something but uh yeah i haven't gotten a response back so uh maybe i can just be on the fence there and just scream his name we'll we'll have to see it's a good day man morning when I rode the bike here to drop off my son at the course, Pearl Jam were sound checking, so that was kind of cool. I'm almost running out of battery in this bike because I didn't charge it before. So right now I'm running on zero. So I have to work it a little bit. It's fine. That's our cup Okay, let's go. All right. Let's go. Hey, yeah, what's going on? You're sitting, you're walking hard. Oh damn, that was tough. You want to go now at the over? Are you happy that it's over? Huh? You did? Happy that it's over? It's good win. Dad needs to drink something. Come on.
So, album tips. There are long time no album tips for you guys. You should go follow my Ola England new music Spotify list. Look at this. That's me right there and you can follow this list. I put the link in the description of this video. But I want to talk about a new album from Municipal Waste called Electrified Brain. Can we talk about this pics? What? It's a great album. And holy shit, I didn't know. But this is the album I've been waiting for for a long time. Just saying. Are you riffing? Are you rocking out? I had no idea I needed this album right now. You know, you hear a lot of new music on Spotify and you know, a lot of it is good, but a lot of it is also very overproduced nowadays, man. And uh, it's for me, and maybe it's because I'm getting older, but it just get, it gets tiresome to hear the same fucking, you know, the, the same tonal dynamics in different bands. They sound the same. A lot of them sound the same nowadays. That's a very boomer statement right there. But Electrified Brain here with Municipal Waste, it's so nice to hear a snare that's just a fucking mic snare and not a mixed with a sample or anything like that. Listen to the snare, man. Oh, that makes me so fucking happy. I've been listening to this album for a whole week now. It's an absolute banger of an album. And I put it in the Ola New Music Spotify playlist. You can go like that. I put the link in the description. Uh, hello. Thank you. Guitar of the week. New segment of Sunday with Ola. I show my, my own guitars, some love. When you have a lot of guitars, it's just really hard to find the time to play them all. So that's why Joel actually came up with the idea to do Guitar Week. It's not my idea, it's actually his. But I was about to take credit for that. So, but that's not okay. Even though he was probably inspired by me when he came up with that album. All right, this is the guitar today. Look at this. It's the Washburn Solar Winter. And this is the absolute first time I ever had a guitar design of mine being made into a real brand. Absolute first of the first, man. This is the start of my first design. It originally came with Duncan Distortion and 59 and Nick white pickups. But later on, I installed these Fishman Classic, Modern Classic, I think they're called, or Fluence Classic pickups in there. And, uh, you know, just to fit the whole aesthetic of the guitar with uh, the uh, chrome hardware. And uh, if you can see, go, come closer. There's like a pearl white finish on it. So it's a lot of sparkles if you come close. Can you see that? Great. Anyways, take a look at this then. Look at the back. Can you see that? It says winter and with a fear logo down there. This guitar was finished by Chewy at Washburn. And if you know Chewy, he did a lot of the dime bag finishes back in the day for Dimebag Daryl. Working together with Washburn and doing this was so weird, man, because Dimebag was a big part of Washburn and Randall. And at this time, around 2012, I didn't plan to go with Washburn and Randall, but that's how it all ended up because uh, Washburn and Randall were owned by the same brand. So it started with me actually getting a Randall Satan signature amplifier and then I started talking with Washburn about making a signature line of guitars. And that's when I brought in my own designs to Washburn and said like, okay, I want to do something, but I want to do it with my designs. And this is the result right there. And that would later become solar guitars. This right here is the actual first in this shape, you know, with the, the carved scoops like this and made in the US of A, obviously. They were under the parallax line. And I'm going to show you something ugly because these Fishman pickups, they didn't actually fit uh stock so kent you know yeah 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 or meshuga he had to drill and he drilled a little too hard so there's a there's you can see a rounded edge right there that looks a little like this look at that can you see it there so it's like there's a straight line there and then it goes like whoop and then out so what are you gonna do that's just how it is sometimes one of the strings are off but let's just try it anyways it's an every tune bridge so it's gonna be interesting seeing if it's still in tune dude it has to be a long time since i played this guitar okay <laughs> and drop.
isn't it weird that you have a guitar sitting in its case for several, 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 se Can you speak English? Fuck you! Isn't it funny that you have a guitar sitting in a case for several years and you bring it back out and it's in tune? Isn't that weird? And another thing, this back of the neck right here. Uh, I don't know if you saw the latest Sonic with Bola where I talked about the Dean Dimebolt. It's having a slight little V-shape on neck. Uh, this particular neck has that slight V-shape right there. So it has this little edge. It's not as, it's a little bit more subtle than on the Dime. S line, uh, no, dime bolt, sorry. So it's ex extremely comfortable, man. It's still a very thin neck, but with a slight, slight B shape right there. Look at that. This is something that we changed a little bit. We made it way more a streamlined, but you have an edge right here. That was something we later just carved off a little bit just to make it a little bit more nice. This was made in 2013. You have the custom shop logo back there. Look at that. Pretty sick, man, piece of history. In my opinion, not may maybe not for you, but for me, it's a piece of history, at least. So uh, there you go. That's the guitar of the week right there. The Washburn Solar Venter. How about that? All right, that was Sunday with Ola 93 for you right there. I hope you had a good time. If you want to support what I'm doing, OlaEnglandShop.com, buy a t-shirt, an album, something like that. To the people in the chat right now, love you guys. You're awesome. See you next Sunday. Solar Rift Contenders tomorrow. Guys, what? On the second channel, the live stream. All right. <laughs> See you guys. Goodbye.